One of the best new franchises right now is A Quiet Place. And when John Krasinski premiered this a couple of years back, I loved the first one. And then I fell even more in love with the second one. And then I was hoping that we were going to get a part three. But then they said, wait, 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 wait. Before we do a part three, we got to show you take it all the way back to day one, which saw a little bit of a glimpse of in part two. And now, well, we have A Quiet Place day one starring Lupita Nyong'o and Joseph Quinn. But more importantly... It is directed and written by Michael Sarnicky, who did an incredible job with Pig. Well, now you got me on board. But now you have my attention. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're going to be discussing A Quiet Place Day One. This is about a woman named Sam who finds herself trapped in New York City during the early days of an invasion by an alien creature with ultrasonic hearing. You know what the Quiet Place movies are. If you've watched them before, you got to stay quiet. You got to be as quiet as possible when you go see this in the movie theater. So if you're planning to play on your phone, if you're planning to jingle jangle all up around the stairs, you should probably just wait to see this one at theaters. Do not ruin it for other people. But what I will say is if you're a fan of the other two, I think you are in for a delightful surprise. But I think one that's a little bit more surprising and one that I don't think I was personally anticipating when I honestly should have been knowing who the director and writer of this film was. And I really want to set preference for how this film is before we actually dive a little bit deeper into this to prepare you for the type of film that you were about to experience. Now, do I think this film is great? I think it's really good. I actually think I might like it a little bit more on a rewatch because I had all these expectations going into this movie. It ended up being something a little bit different. Yes, it is an alien monster thriller, but at the same time, it's also half of a very meditative drama about our last days of our lives and the kind of the subliminal and really simplistic stuff of our lives. I was not in anticipating to get that emotional. I know the first two Quiet Place films had its dramatic moments, but definitely wasn't anticipating getting into those, and I probably should have understood that once I saw that Michael was going to be directing this. So definitely leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. Are you a fan of the Quiet Place films? Are you not? Would you be interested in me ranking all three of them? Well, let me know. Maybe I'll make a video this weekend about that. But diving into this, like I said, I don't want to dive into my pros and cons first. I actually want to set you up. What type of movie are you getting here? Because I think some people might be going into this anticipating a little bit more of an action thriller heavy. I've seen some early reactions saying that if the first two were alien, this is the aliens, which is the more action centric of, you know, the alien franchise. And I don't think it's that at all. In fact, yes, it is thrilling and it does have its action moments and in, in a lot of different ways, this is the biggest in terms of set pieces and the amount of alien creatures that you see and you learn a little bit more about them. But at the same point in time, hearing that this is going to take place in New York, you see how an invasion like this really screws our world up like that within like the span of just maybe a couple minutes to an hour. New York's basically gone and it's silent right away. And I like that very much. So was I anticipating that? No, I was anticipating a little bit more insanity. That insanity, just snap of a finger just vanishes and our world changes forever. And I think in some humble ways, there is a great way to look at that in terms of how big world events can affect our country and have affected other countries in terms of just those in the snap of a finger, how quick action things happen and if you've ever been a part of a tragedy or a car accident those things happen so fast that sometimes it's hard to replay back all the moments there and the film very much puts you into the shoes of sam right away with that but the film is also not afraid it's it's going to give you the thrills it's going to give the action but it is very much more of a slow burn than i anticipated and I should have known that going into this because Michael Sarnicki made it, again, an incredible movie named Pig that probably features one of Nicolas Cage's best performances ever. And that film is a total slow burn, but it's a slow burn that by the end, you just absolutely love the choices. And the more I think about A Quiet Place Day One, it's basically the same. When I walked out of the movie, I thought, that was really good. I liked it. The more I sit on it, the more I'm starting to go, no, that was actually kind of great. It's kind of brilliant. It's a lot different. And I think that's where our expectations get us, is that we can feel underwhelmed 
because we didn't get something that we were anticipating. So I want to set your expectations. It's a slower burned movie. It does have its bigger set pieces. It does have a little bit more action. But in the end of the day, the film is more centered not on the plot and exactly what the characters are doing, but more with developing them. And I really like that because in the end of the day, it's about one character going to get a slice of pizza. And I'm not even joking. But the implications around that slice of pizza are some of the most special things I think we can see. And I think it kind of shows that us as human beings should lean into that a little bit more of loving our lives a little bit in the simple times of our memories and certain things. So with that said, I've rambled on enough. Let's dive into my pros. Number one thing, uh, Lupita Nyong'o is absolutely not just stunning in here, but extraordinary. She's one of the best actresses out there. I mean, there's, there's no lying about that or anything. We all know it. But what I love about this performance from her is personally, I felt it was so subtle, but especially because, you know, she can't use her voice fully, but it shows a different lens of what we've seen from A Quiet Place and primarily what this character is going through. I don't want to get into it because it is spoiler related, but when we meet this character early on, we can see she is clearly in pain and has a lot going on in her life, but at the same point in time, has a lot of other things that maybe she just kind of wants to go through and while she's experiencing all this on the end of the world situation she's able to deliver such an excellent manner and showcase kind of again all the themes i just talked about but it also joseph quinn i want to give a shout out to because i really liked him as eddie and stranger things but i've been waiting for like that next film to show me or that next project to just show me that like yeah he's not just that one hit wonder and i'm so happy to say that when his characters first introduced didn't love him. I was like, yeah, okay, he's okay. And by the end of the movie, I almost got a tear in my eye from not just their chemistry because their chemistry is very well done with what they do with their relationship, but primarily Quinn's moments with just some of the stuff and the views that he has in his eyes. And same thing goes for Lupita Nyong'o. I've always said when it comes down to acting and you can tell so much in an actor's eyes and those two brought to life those characters to where I didn't see Eddie Munson, I didn't see Lupita Nyong'o, I saw their characters, and I love that. I also thought Alex Wolf was really good in here, and yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it at. I have one other actor I want to talk about, but I'm going to talk about that in my issues. Alongside this, let's talk about the directing. Uh, Michael Sarnicki, I think, again, did a fantastic job weaving in a lot of the set pieces alongside the dramatic avenues of it all and specifically that meditative thematical pieces and I like how he built up to those I think sometimes the slow burn gets a little bit ruined by some of the random action set pieces it's like sometimes he's like okay wait 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 wait, we gotta remind you that this is an action thriller and then like other times it's kind of like the vice versa of that situation where it's like okay it's an action thriller but wait we have to have a dramatic moment so I think sometimes like if I'm talking about a mixed aspect it does get a little bit jumbled there but I don't think that's more in direction. I think that's just more in terms of the style of the filmmaking. But I do think Michael does such an incredible job bringing these characters to life, bringing these blockbuster thrilling moments to life, and again, making it feel like an event. And not being afraid to not show what is going on, but showing our characters in distress, which makes us more stressed, specifically when these things first drop. And I love how instantly it became that quiet settling. Most of my audience was quiet. You know, you have the stupid people with their like their little jingle jangles and jumping up and down the seats and moving back and forth and going to the bathroom and all that stuff. It's like, just sit down. You would probably die in the quiet place world. In terms of those sequences, there are very memorable moments. And not like the first two didn't have memorable moments, but there are some cinematography and some shot choices in here that are just absolutely stunning. And I think it is very safe to say that this is the best looking Quiet Place film yet. We get the most creatures, but we get the most sequences with them. And the usage of using New York, whether it's the subways, whether it's the giant buildings, whether it's everything. I mean, basically, you can think of in New York. They bring the culture to life in a very apocalyptic themed way, but with these creatures being able to view it. And it very much kept the intensity up to where I had to hold my breath. And I felt like I couldn't even drink from my cup because first off, I didn't want to be the asshole in the theater being loud. But also, 
I was just so into those moments and wondering what was going to happen next. And one last thing before we talk about my issues, I have to say that the sh final shot of this film might be one of my favorite endings to a movie this year. And I say that with such utter delight because the more and more I think about that ending, it really hammers home the themes and messages of this movie. And it's, it's awesome. But let's dive into my issues. And the first thing I want to mention is more just a personal one because I'm such a big fan of this franchise. And that is Digimon Hansu, who is in A Quiet Place Part 2, is also in this. And it's kind of that nice connective tissue. I got to say I'm a little bit disappointed again. I, I was disappointed with his usage in part two because he's such a phenomenal actor that when I saw, okay, we're bringing him back for day one. Okay, cool. We get to see some more of his story. And he does one thing in here that I'm like, that is actually a very interesting concept. Let's, let's touch on that. And no, like after that one thing, nothing happens with this character. And I honestly thought that was a very, very massive missed opportunity. Now, maybe they have the plan and idea to give him his own solo film that takes place all again during this time. And if they do that, okay, whatever. I might forgive that eventually. But this actor is so underrated. Like, Hansu deserves so much more. And I really think they should have weaved him a little bit more into the plot. And I think it could have been absolutely nice i think you could have done something special there personally as for my other issue it was just that one mixed thing where i think sometimes the tonal balance of what they were trying to go for just didn't always hit well but that that's really it uh the more i sit on a quiet place day one the more i like it which is good to say because when i saw that the embargo was very late it worried me a little bit but I think A Quiet Place is one part monster movie and another part meditative drama about living life and all parts really, really good. Nyong'o is extraordinary and about as perfect as a performance could get and Quinn surprised me with his depth. And of course, Michael Sarnicki showcases his specialty. I really like this movie and I think again on another rewatch, I might actually even come to finally love it. I think that love really will come from now understanding what type of movie I'm getting here and seeing how they can play in the quiet place world, provide the thrills, provide the nice scares and provide that entertainment, but also provide a really nice drama to it as well is probably the most important piece of it. And that's one of the things that I really loved about it. So with all that said, I'm going to give a quiet place day one a B plus. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.